Good morning, everyone, especially to the organizers of this forum. And thank you, Mauricio. We will be, uh, we're starting this uh, uh, day and we will be discussing the digital and the political transformation and what uh, are the players that we have in the near future. And we're going to discuss all of this at this table. We have an, uh, participating here at this round table an important group of professionals who have contributed from different institutions to uh, to mention this uh, concern and to devise policies for integration of the uh, to digital world of the uh, of the rural areas and so i'd like to uh, welcome the participants right now uh, we have, we have a colleague from colombia from finagro which is who is in charge of uh, in financial instruments in Colombia. Monica Rodriguez is one other participant here. She's an economist and she's part of the ECLAC and, and um, the Economic uh, Commission of the ECLAC. We have Silvia Masroa. The, she's a researcher of the Brazilian company for agri farming, farming uh, research and digital agriculture. She has participated very intensely in the movement of tech in Brazil and and she has contributed to consolidate ecosystems and innovation for uh, digital agriculture in Brazil. We also have another colleague who has been uh, director of the Chilean Foundation uh, and with a great experience as an international uh, counselor in telecom and has worked with the central, uh, with the World Bank, with the FAO and a CLAC and has been an advisor to many Latin American countries in, in issues of farming, digital and gender issues and they're all all of these colleagues at this round table are very welcome and we thank you for being here with us we're going to follow the same order that I've mentioned for your presentations you will have 12 minutes each I'm sorry I will be the bad guy of this event because I have to interrupt you very gently of course letting you know that your time is over or about to expire and after that we will be seeing their presentations, of course, in full screen mode. And those of you who are not speaking, please keep your microphones off. After these four presentations, we'll have a discussion space that will be ending at 10.30 Chilean time. And those of you who are with us, of course, can ask all the questions you want. And, and you, we will have questions and answers, of course, and you will use your menu bar on your screen and uh, raise your hands there. So we shall begin the forum and we are going to hear from our first speaker and uh, once again, uh, uh, greet and welcome Angela, who is a colleague and friend with whom we have worked on several opportunities and I don't need to in, uh, further uh, introduce her, I think. Welcome, Angela. Okay, please bear with me. I'm trying to share the presentation. Please don't take the time away from me. The first person that is going to come ahead. So, and furthermore, I cannot see my presentation. It does not allow me to share the presentation. I don't know what's going wrong. Let's see if the technical team can support us. Yeah, when we do it a live event, the same thing happens. So the colleagues that are with you, I think it's a problem of security since I work in a financial institution. Can we begin with another one who presents until I solve this? Okay, 
So then let's go with Monica. Here we have, she is our partner. Go ahead, Monica. Thank you very much. I understand that I'm sharing because I started before. Let me know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Sí. Yes. Go ahead, Monica. So I'm going to shorten it because I had made it for 15 minutes, but I will jump over some slides. So I would like to make this presentation around the following question. If the effort to develop virtual agendas for agriculture in the rural areas is re relevant and or necessary in Latin America and the Caribbean. In the ECLAC, we have been working in this and we have studied at least these eight elements that we think that justify that institutional effort to move forward towards a digital sectorial agenda for agriculture. And we're going to see the gaps, which is well known. So I will go briefly through that, and then we will go with the other components. So these are figures of the home surveys in 2020 here. You can see a clear barrier, which is connectivity. Clearly, a home that is not connected to internet has many limitations to develop. And after the pandemic, uh, furthermore, to have access to topics that were face to face, like education and public health. So the gaps are quite big, important in places like in Bolivia, like 30 times the access of the rural areas in comparison to the uh, urban homes. And we also have the agricultural homes and where the head of the house is in agriculture and would be the equivalent to the homes in family agriculture. So this is what we use. In countries that do not have a big gap like Uruguay and Costa Rica, but in all the cases, the access is limited in the rural areas. And in the case of the agricultural, of the family homes, those gaps are structural. They have been there for years and they have worsened with the crisis in 2020, 21, 22, because uh, the, there are limitations of resources, more activities that are happening through vital areas, and these people have less access to the digital areas. But these gaps don't come alone. They come with other gaps that are prior to the digitalization of the economies, the lack of income, the access to services, to infrastructure, or the basic services like health, uh, education, and social provision. Here, for example, we can see these differences in terms of income. We can compare what are the ones that uh, receive uh, salaries in the agricultural sector and the others, and we can see there is a difference. The same in the case of the self-employed or the workers in front of the ones that are not agricultural. As I said, these gaps are related with prior gaps, but they are also reinforced. And what we saw during the pandemic said that there were intense gaps to have access to education between the rural and the urban areas. And with the digitalization of the activities, we have more limitations for the students or the young people or children of the rural areas can have access to a quality education. What worries us is 
We are speaking about structural gaps, but also we're speaking about a strong cultural topic. Since 2014, poverty has been increasing. So the gaps have grown. We will publish in the new days some figures of EGLAC about rural and urban poverty, the estimates for 2021 and 2022, and we see that they increase in the rural areas. And extreme poverty is linked to um, food insecurity. So these are topics that are linked one, the ones with the other ones. And what limits the access, because there's also a cost, there's a cost in Latin America which is not competitive. The cost of the digital basket, there is between an 11, 14% uh, of the digital, digital basket, the broadband, what is the cost of the average in a country in Latin America? It costs between 12 and 14 percent of the income and the recommendation that it should not go more than 2 percent. And all of that has clear implications in poverty. We also see gaps in the use, the productive use. Here is the use for internet within the agriculture. I will not, not stop in the figures, but there are regional gaps, geographical gaps, and also gaps between types of producers, a family agriculture, and the average of general producers. I would like to go then to the next topic that I think justify this sectorial agenda that has to do with the environmental external uh, issues. So here we all know this data how much we have to produce of food in our planet with an agricultural surface that practically will not grow. But not only that, agriculture now it's intensive in the use of several natural resources. So the challenge is immense, but not only that, the challenge is also linked to an intensification of the extreme climatic events. And recently, the products of the pandemic and the war that the fertilizers, that basically is one of the most important inputs that we use to increase the production without increasing the extension, fertilizers now are less accessible for the producers. Even though with the prices of agricultural products that we have a maximum historical, for example, for rice, um, they grow even more. On the positive side, there are many digital technologies that can enable that transition. They can um, increase the productivity and less dependency of fertilizers and other inputs, for example, energy or other resources that generate high emissions. So the idea here is that these technologies are cost accessible. The study that you see there at the right, but I le would leave the reference, is a study that shows that it's possible to generate here to 2050 uh, food systems with low emissions from the existing technologies, even though all of them are not cost efficient. But they can be do done with the help of digitalization in the training of the producers to use those technologies. The third topic that I would like to speak is the articulation between the demand and the offer in the digital agriculture. But more than speaking generally, I would like to speak about an example. We are working in a project is the Ibero-American Network of Digitalization of Agriculture and Livestock with uh, three countries, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, and Spain. And they have identified three uh, 
niche where these institutes can intervene in that uh, link between the producer and the innovator. So quite often the innovator is away and the producer does not know what type of technologies uh, there are. So there is a demand. So they are working in three areas. We have the web page where you can explore, but the idea is uh, technological surveillance. What is being generated in new technology? Mentorship of startups to help those startups to make new uh, technologies to apply them to the agri agricultural sector. So if there is a new technology, they can validate and say this works, this is worth it, and these are the risks and the good parts. And finally, the last part is the articulation of the stakeholders of the different areas. So there, in the far, uh, in the left corner, all the instrument of policies that exist for digital transformation, we see policies for the transformation of agriculture, the national development plans until national um, digital agendas and plans and programs that are subnational. But of the countries of the region, only Brazil has a sectorial digital agenda. The other ones have digital agendas that are generic. In the graph to your right is that agriculture has a very small place in those digital agendas. Even though the importance of agriculture that it has for the region, it is mentioned, but it uh, has a little presence in the digital agenda. So that is one of the reasons why the sectorial specificities led us to think that it will be important to generate that sectorial um, activities. And this, my last slide, it has to do with those elements that enable, that are cross-cutting to any sector and that are at a level of higher to the agricultural sector and that have other things involved. The institutions with um, digital policies are many uh, and they need this umbrella that articulates them. And we put the example of Brazil and how the Chamber of Agriculture is made that has an important action plan and maybe our colleague will mention the final remarks. We have these challenges that have to do with these enabling elements that are cross-cutting, structure, connectivity, regulation, access with the prices and subsidies, and the use or the capacities, uh, digital education. All of this justifies this package to consider a sectorial agenda. There are risks and opportunities, like in the case of labor, through automat automatization, but this is a risk that should be considered as an opportunity for the sector. And finally, the technological chain needs this collaboration between the different stakeholders. So I leave you the invitation for ELAC 2024, that is happening now in Montevideo. It begins today. And for the first time, it will have a lack is the articulation of a digital agenda for the region of Latin America. It's coordinated by ECLAC and will have an agricultural table that we are coordinating here with my colleague Octavio. So I give you this invitation and tomorrow we will deal with the agricultural topic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Monica. I think that furthermore, this investment, it's really suitable. And now we're going to go because the um, colleagues already helped Angela with her presentation. So, Angela, can you give your intervention after what Monica did? 
you have on the right time, so you have the benchmark. So I will not have to interrupt you. Please mute your microphones. <clears throat> and let's keep moving forward. So Angela, and thank you very much for your support. I was not able to share from here. So it, this is important. I would like to welcome all of you and several colleagues that we have worked together for a long time. Now I am in Finagro, as uh, uh, Jose Luis mentioned, is an entity When the page doesn't change, you let us know, and the technicians will help us. Um, the next uh, slide, please. Okay, I will tell you in the meanwhile. So Finagro, maybe some of you know it and others not, it's a second level development bank that Colombia has and its main activity is to promote the transformation of agriculture in Colombia. It's an entity that has three basic elements for this exercise, which is credit, um, it's a credit that promotes because it has a special conditions to promote agriculture. And we are managing the agricultural insurances and the management of guarantees. So in that sense, connecting with Monica's presentation that I think it was very timely, the investment, because it gives us a broader perspective. Without doubt, the financial sector, the banking sector, the rural banking sector is a great user and demands all the technological services to have access to credit. And we share, especially in my case, I share my concern that Mario mentioned in the sense that it's very important that the all the digital digitalization process that is going on does not become an exclusion mechanism that opens more gaps, but on the contrary, it, it is an inclusion mechanism that closes the gaps. The next slide, please. I already mentioned this. So one of the most important topics for us and that humans demand is the financial inclusion. Without doubt, even though we have a national system of a strong credit system, that we have a funding that the Colombian system has that will allow to have the funds to reach many small producers, there are still important gaps. As we can see, these are exercises that we make to project what would be the growth and the participation of producers or how many producers really have access to credit. And here, more or less, this is an approximate it's like 50% of the producers have access to credit nowadays. In that sense, it's very important to say, and we can make this analysis more sophisticated in the sense to know it's credit for what, for how long, and which areas of the country. You can find areas which deeper financing capacities than others, and in that sense, I would like to say that connectivity and the capacity to have access to credit through digital tools. 
So this is one of the greatest challenges that we have had in this government, is to try at least to include 750,000 rural producers new to the financial system that probably never have had a contact with a financial service for the agricultural sector. The next one, please. Nevertheless, this challenge is not a minor one because we know that we have sources that we can irrigate credit for the transformation of agriculture, but we have a problem of demand because there are big problems of access. The credit market in Colombia as such cannot guarantee a complete access because we have many um, problems at little competitive markets, some problems in provisions in the public goods and other types uh, with uh, we compete with informal credit, which is a credit that reaches rural uh, sec sectors with very high rates and that are related with violence, with complex topics that are managed in the rural sector in Colombia. We have a strong barrier of increases of the prices or the inputs, so we can be uh, facing a lack of investment in the rural areas. And um, they are creating a strong incentive to of investment in the development of economies of scale. So this combination of factors generates a very complex element to have access to credit, which is risk. One of the factors why there are greater limitations, so the bank or the instruments that have access to credit is that there is a high perception of risk and risk makes the financial entities, microfinance or formal banking, decide not to reach these areas due to this environment that does not favor credit. So we can say that this offer, even though we have a second floor banking, that we have a funding mechanism in a permanent way, it's restricted because we have the small producers that have low uh, income levels that will in imply a higher subsidy. The credit has a subsidy per se, but if that subsidy is not enough to reach those areas where we still do not reach, and we have great limitation. This is seen as a risk sector and the interest rates uh, um, restrict the credit to small producers. The banks have information and also the conditions also are not necessary for the intermediaries. I want to reach uh, the digitalization, so let's go to the next one. So, what implications do we have that we have a lack of guarantees and low syst um, systems of assistance? And generally, and here, I would like to stop into things that have to deal with digitalization. We have a productive sector and there is a lack of financial education and a high vulnerability and there are unexpected events. So Finagro starts to work and we want to advance to have better information to reduce that risk environment. We have uh, reduced Finagro educates and an application that's called Decision. And here I will connect to, will, can help to improve the cost of the access to credit that will allow the user through a digital solution to have a better reach with the financial intermediaries that will help them to understand the business and to have a good project to 
so they can have access to credit. Nevertheless, here, the credit, all the steps that they have to follow, there has to be a prospection, we have to link it, we have to do a credit study, definitions of the credit conditions at this disimbursement, a follow-up, and then to cover the credit. So all this process nowadays are not digitalized enough. So it is a relation with a financial entity that they have to go to the area or the producer has to move to the financial entities, which creates delays and creates higher costs. So the credit in itself does not have an opportunity. Second point, it makes it, it costs more to link this person to a credit operation. So we, what have we found? And that's why I think it's so important this conversation in this round table. We firmly believe, and this is one of the greatest bets, is to try to have a greater digitalization of the access process to credit in such a way to reduce the costs, the cost of a control of investment. So through a digital process, this producer can have a permanent uh, connection with the financial intermediary and the financial intermediary can have a greater clarity of the management. We know that the cost, the average cost, could be between a 7 and 10 percent of the credit value for a financial intermediary, which makes it very costly. We have affirmation that says that when we include digital tools, we can reduce the cost up to a 50 percent. So this has several implications. The first one is that for the financial intermediary, he will have better condition to have a better market that, as you can see, has multiple barriers. But one of the concerns that we have, especially in this government, is that we cannot attend the management of risk only through the increase in the interest rate. We have to generate conditions and we can have digital solutions that allow an understanding of the risk, being close, a guarantee, and a technical accompaniment or follow-up. So we can have interest rates that enable the development of profitable business models for the small producers. Two minutes. And in this, I would like to close here because I was going to speak about the Financro products, but I would like to give you with a reflection. We are aware of what this will imply in terms of costs, a digital solution for the access to credit. Nevertheless, as I said it at the beginning, this is not something that we can do alone. Colombia has big connectivity problems. Only 22% in the rural areas have connectivity. Then to develop an instrument of this type, would be like maybe a digital phone that requires a connectivity where only 28% of the rural area has access to that service. And if 28% only have access to this, or maybe they are in 2G or in 1G, which for a digital solution is not enough. And also the lack of uh, financial education to use a digital application requires minimum basic knowledge from the producer in such a way that they can provide information and through the application to have an adequate credit for the problem that they have to attend. So what have we seen in the analysis 
of the agricultural portfolio, which is an important portfolio. It's like five, seven million pesos, but it's a portfolio that is not necessarily geared to a productive activity for transformation. Quite often is given um, cash flow to keep income that does not allow innovation in the productive sector. And finally, but not less important, a study made with USAID, there were very several conclusions. For example, a smartphone, a digital, digital solution, generally does not have the capacity to help um, an agriculture that has uh, big uh, fingers. So I think, and we see digitalization as a great opportunity to improve the access to credit. But we have to enable that this process is not only for a population group that has the enough conditions to access to these conditions, which is connectivity, knowledge of the tool, and the possibility to have access to a tool that will allow him to connect. So we are halfway, and this is how we're working strongly with the financial intermediaries with that understanding that we can uh, make this credit democratic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. And we are now apprised of the uh, situation, the concern, the access to credit, to financial instruments, and digitalization. Here we are talking about different things. And perhaps we forget that the our, uh, digital coverage is what used to be before the arrival of the uh, energy, electric energy in the rural areas. So this is something that we're discussing now. And it's, in fact, now let's give the floor to Sylvia from the Digital Agriculture, Agricultural. Uh, and thank you, Sylvia, for being with us and uh, for your presentation. Thank you in advance. Uh, so you have the floor, Sylvia. On my screen, I see while well, this we have some issues here. Why don't we take give the floor to Francine then maybe to save some time? Francine, we're very pleased to have you here. Uh, you are from the Chilean Foundation for Agrarian Innovation. And so Francine, why don't you take the floor now? Thank you. Your microphone is off, Francine. Let me see if I can share a presentation here on the screen. And if we cannot share it, it's okay. No, no worries. You can try to share from your computer. Can you see it? Luis, uh, not yet. But just a minute. It looks like we're uploading it over here. Well, let's see. Anyway, I will start. I, first of all, I would like to thank you all for this inf invitation that I very much appreciate. It's an opportunity. Thank you, FAO. Thank you, Monica. I have known Monica for a while from ECLAC, of course. Monica, hello. It is a pleasure, as I say, to be here at this uh, and meeting and to show you an overview of, from the point of view of the Chilean government, everything has to do with information technologies has been a this is issue is a this uh, we have been working on for a long time since 2006 this foundation for agrarian innovation is an institution that belongs is part of the ministry of agriculture of chile and it's a private sector uh, private uh, law 
and uh, legislation and it allows this allows us to uh, gives gives us more flexibility and allows for innovation and and for us inter information technology has been a very a fundamental um, theme and first of all uh, today on a government level we have two important policies that uh, support us for our work in digital in information technologies and we're first of all um, meaning a policy of uh, sovereignty and uh, food sovereignty and food safety and and we need to also make sure that the population has access to food and healthy food and of course this is on a national level another policy that we have uh, is the something for rural development which is where which constitutes a framework for all of our work that we have been deploying and i was mentioning 2006 yes that it is since 2006 that we started to work because that is when we the, the table for technology and information technologies was created for the ministry of agriculture and this instance was uh, it, this is still working the, the table is active and uh, 12 institutions from the Ministry of Agriculture participate and the, their work is to coordinate every work uh, carried out in each one of the institutions. Just to give you a, an idea for those of you who are not familiar with the institutions of the Ministry of Agriculture, I can actually mention that we have large institutions that are in charge uh, and that are supporting farming credits and others that are supporting risks and others are training supporting by carrying out training so we have these 12 institutions who have been working since 2006 and i even would like to uh, mention why 2006 it's because during that period that's when the very first need arises in the government of Chile to uh, the need for identifying points in the rural area that had no connectivity at all. And so the idea uh, of uh, starting that program was called uh, All of Chile Communicated. And this was done from the government with the Intel private uh, company to be able to connect 90% of the population. That was the goal to reach 90% of the uh, rural connectivity however today i must say that unfortunately this connectivity has only uh, reached certain rural spaces because today we have a figure that is still that still does not go beyond 60 65 percent of uh, in terms of uh, rural connectivity and so that very first effort has been continued and i must remark that because up until today, we are continuing with our efforts uh, of coordinating this table, but also in parallel, we're working. And we are focusing on precisely on the instruments and on tools so that the farming sector can access technology. And secondly, we have created the connect rural connectivity table from where we're working on uh, telecom and we're also working with the tele telephone companies and telecommunications ministry so that we can actually articulate this and reach a greater and have a greater coverage in connectivity and go beyond 65 percent and also in terms of the programs that we're developing now uh, by our innovation foundation uh, we are actually looking at several uh, aspects because we know very well what Monica mentioned. Those are those four famous gaps that we know, the famous gaps uh, in technology. So we have the generational gap, gen, we, need, we have the educational gap, the income and the gender gap. So we have four gaps. And so we're working on different programs within this uh, general outlook. We are focusing especially on the rural young people and we are 
offering several online training sessions for all the rural youths. And we know that both on a rural and as well as urban level, we are the, our young people are more and more connected. And we also see this effect and mention, it was really mentioned by Luis, that's the pandemic effect where we have already talking about the return of the young guys and to the to the farmlands and with this interaction we are studying how to go back have the semi-urban and rural people to go back to the countryside incorporating also new technologies we also are looking very specially at the technologies and the rural women in with rural women, we are also, we have just conducted a new study with Prodemo, which is an institution that works with the women on a global scale. And this document is a very interesting one because it, it offers a very particular uh, look uh, at the rural women and their connections with the ITs. And uh, this, of course, when I was at the CLAC, I was looking at uh, so to be able to identify what was the information that we had current and updated information concerning Chile and other countries uh, about how the women, the rural women has a connection with technologies and to see what new information we need to generate. And this is, was particularly f with a focus on Chile. And so this document comes to fill a gap of, of this information gap that we had. And so we're working very strongly with rural women in networks. We're working on a cycle of workshops that are going to be offered just for rural women and identifying as well all their obstacles and hindrances that they are already identifying. And I must say something very interesting here. In this study, we are actually identifying that 66% of women have more rural connectivity as compared to 50% of men who do have rural connectivity. So this is quite surprising. But it, it still is very revealing about the, our reality. It is the woman who actually has nearness and comes close to the children and the young people. It's the woman who's actually helping with the homework and so on. And this is the uh, the closeness between w women and, and children. And therefore, women are closer to technology because of this. And today we have submitted that as a special case in Chile of women, certain women who have developed during the pandemic uh, they have developed online trading and uh, e-commerce e in general, thanks to their knowledge of connectivity. So we have a case of Luva Sol, who developed her own products, honey products, and she, with the support of her own son, she created her website and is currently sending, selling online. That is a particular example to show that women today are a lot more empowered and are even According to the same study, it is women who are the contact node between all of the government funds uh, towards, towards the public and with regard to the funds for rural sector. So women are the the um, the instrument for us to reach out to them and and with our policies. Also within this analysis, a look at cooperatives. Uh, cooperatives are also for us a focus uh, of attention because a lot in a lot of times in the past in this country we have they have been left aside and we are currently working with a, a special program for credit program and we have created one from the grassroots and we have uh, worked with two great cooperatives and confederations of peasants and uh, they have over 250 cooperatives in this uh, federation and so and so we're working a project cooperatives 2.0 and we're working as with a single program not just for farming but also with the ministry of sciences and the ministry of Econ the economy and the idea is that we can we hopefully will do a big work with these cooperatives uh, 2.0 and we will offer training and we will be able to 
offer this through technologies and finally give them a stamp, a cooperative stamp offered by the Ministry of the Economy that will enable us further on to be prioritized uh, and uh, access have access to certain credits and the banks will be uh, giving them priority and they can access and uh, funds to cover their necessities and to be able to connect. You have two minutes. This I'm at the end. And so a technology uh, point of view uh, that we have another foundation and we have re uh, taken a, a surveillance platform and intelligence for innovation and we are taking over once again a future analysis to see exactly what the growth of innovation means for small farming. But as Luis was saying, also concerning what is happening uh, on a worldwide level. And we currently need not just a surveillance outwardly, but we also have to have a surveillance inwardly inside our country, within our country. And this uh, means that our, our administration is concerned and the government is concerned and we are looking at all of these issues concerning the in information technologies and, and communication technologies. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much because you have, uh, you're part of a very important uh, uh, institution with for Chile and, and and especially with this new government administration, we understand that you're working hard on this. Um, and now let us hear from Sylvia, who will be sharing a presentation. Sylvia is a researcher uh, from the Farming Brazilian Institution. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? And thank you. Uh, if you can hear me well, okay, thank you. Let us, we, we begin, I'm going to apologize because I will be speaking in Portugnol. We started to discuss the food security as a great global challenge. And on the other hand, we we are facing the fourth industrial revolution and this digitalization process. But the thing is, uh, our focus is not on technology, but on our final consumer. And we need to recognize the importance of Brazilian farming for food security and, of course, uh, uh, the uh, digital agriculture is very decisive to increase productivity and, of course, in terms of the future, we have eight mega trends, sustainability, uh, climate change, agro-digital is the, one of the first uh, mega trends that we uh, identify in the future, future and we have also we have addition of value, integration of technologies and governance amongst other 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 trends, mega trends. But what is the project here for Brazilian agriculture? We in Brazil we have four eras: agriculture 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. 4.0, which we call, which the which is the way we have actually classified it to be able to show that we have uh, how we have reached modern agriculture. And how we had the Green Revolution and, and we are going back to 50 years to analyze our agriculture. We have biotechnology, precision agriculture, we have integration system uh, systems and and since 2015 we've been working with uh, uh, based uh, biological based agriculture and of course we have the information technologies we have commercial internet mobile internet and we have the internet of things so those are the three aspects of 
that we have been working on. So this is the digital transformation in agriculture, and they, these are all the factors. And we have a cross-sectional uh, elements, these in the whole supply chain, productive chain. So we have uh, resilience to climate change, to changes in general, to bio uh, computers, and we have uh, precision agriculture. And of course, uh, the whole supply chain uh, is affected by these cross-sectional elements. Uh, we need to support the rural producers and we uh, and we have to look at the climate risks and we have uh, several projects and we have agrotechnology districts in Brazil and these have three pillars applications uh, training connectivity will allow us to uh, increase the digital technology and amidst producers and we need to create an agenda digital uh, with the connectivity applications and so on and of course uh, we need models for economic sustainability and we have to look at the projects uh, that are uh, friendly to the ecosystem to and that way we can promote courses and the agro technologies we have some for coffee and for other produce uh, the farming family farming is another project and we have a project to share applications informations on for small and medium-sized producers and we currently have a project where we have intelligence to uh, support uh, exports and we have publications and other materials that we have made available and we uh, we help producers find information And so we have to understand that we have public policies that need to be implemented. And uh, we have uh, ways of uh, supporting credit seekers. And we have an economy of 12 billion dollars and and we have we need to use all of these technologies to support the country's uh, agriculture activities also the carbon print is important for us because we want to have a sustainable agriculture as per our commitments and uh, and we want to uh, apply the best uh, the climate risk matrices and the best technologies and those are all part of the public policy what, what do you uh, how what is the vision of the producer and the companies well we have unfortunately we have lost the sound In Brazil, they use a message application and with the iPhones, with the phones, the cell phones. And the costs and the applications and the connectivity we need uh, qualified labor and we need to integrate all of these applications and all of these phases and areas. And so we uh, 
we have in Brazil 23% coverage in the rural areas. And we have two scenarios. One, we have we want to our goal is to double the number of antennas and towers and that would increase 48% coverage and uh, we want to reach 90% coverage and that will be the second scenario and that has a gross uh, production value which is about 1 trillion and and real reales and this would increase to um uh, in this is in first scenario would have 47.56 billion and in the second scenario it's a lot larger as you saw on the screen and so what is the the digital ecosystem like in brazil and uh, so we are currently launching and this year we this has increased in one year we increased 40 percent number of connected uh, operations that are now and that are now only digital and this is being sent uh, in november and there is a we have more connectivity in Brazil. So we are increasing the number of connected people. This is the system in Brasa, which is a public research uh, farming and livestock company and that acts as a facilitator. And we have three models of services. It's, and we have a platform and it it's to share information on all those models. So we have this platform is called Agro API. API platform allows you to share all of the information models and the companies, the businesses can also uh, show how they're working in Brazil and so these are some of the companies with in innovation and this, these are open initiatives and you have all of those on the screen and they're the companies that are working that have the all of the initiatives and they have some of these initiatives have been purchased already because their business models were very attractive. So this is the first farm lab in Brazil, a very connected. Uh, it's a it's a live lab and it's connected and it's prepared for developing uh, ag agricultural technologies and solutions for a, a, a sustainable agriculture so that's what you see on the screen the main trends you have two minutes and so the main trends and challenges and opportunities that we have identified here we have the connectivity and some points for investment and on the other hand technologies that are um, they have to do with the the rural family success and we want to offer opportunities for um, training in digital uh, uh, farming and we want to have reach a consumer market in this uh, digital era we want to have digital platforms we want to reach everyone and we this will be providing us traceability and certification and the uh, we are also aiming at the quality of life of the people, but this in the training is so important that so thank you very much. Uh, and I am here ready for you at your disposal. Thank you, Sylvia. Frankly, I don't know what to do with all of you. Every time this happens, um, we are very uh, short of time. We have said so many important, interesting things. And I think we're on the right 
path with the different agencies who are actually betting on digitalization with all the challenges and opportunities that that implies. It's not just a matter of technology, but also policies and and present the uh, policies instruments to be able to do the follow up and then finances and so on and to close the gaps as you have mentioned and we need to go in a certain way to revitalize these rural areas and i didn't want to uh, uh, i'll give you two more minutes the first thing is the analogy and the, of the coverage and what uh, President Lula said in COP27, putting the challenge of the digital world. And maybe we might have to multiply the, uh, un multiply the antennas to capture the different uh, experiences. Only with the four of you, the people that are here with us, have a good uh, environment or vision of what is happening. Just imagine, as Monica said, um, if we have, if we increase this, if we increase our capacity of what is happening in the region. So it gives us a hint of some steps. But in the same order of presentation, Angela, Monica, Francine, and Silvia, maximum in two minutes. Of all the challenges and opportunities, two main messages, two challenges to which we have to put attention to deepen it. I know it's uh, not much time, then we have uh, another workshop, but the most important of the present attributions, where should we place our attention? I definitely we have to concentrate that the digitalization process does not become an exclusion mechanism of the small producers and of the small agriculture. If the ones that, if the policy maker, the developers, we do not understand that this has to adapt to the reality of this context, what we're going to have is a fragmented society because there is a technology that is not accessible. And this is not only a matter of connectivity or to give the small producers computers. It's to understand how we they can um, develop how they can use this type of technologies. This has been um, described uh, or discussed in the macro of the SDGs, and we see it as a great opportunity. But we are not doing the enough efforts to uh, have inclusion. Thank you very much, Angela. I think uh, that presentation or that recommendation is well deserved. From ECLAC and the FAO and uh, PNUD, the sit current situation of the food crisis is like the perfect storm. We have had uh, several factors, the war, pandemic, uh, disruption of several uh, supply chains, uh, um, the energy, the prices of fertilizers that are less accessible, and climate change that takes away everything. And this affects the sector and several producer countries. So we also think that the solutions have to try to be, to have multiple uh, results there are some digital solutions that will allow us to address, uh, like Ansela said, if we can guarantee that we do not leave anyone behind the small producers, and they are the 90% of the agricultural products in Latin America, if we do not leave them behind, 
we at the same time will be addressing the poverty issues. We see that extreme poverty is growing in the rural areas. So we will tackle also food insecurity where we tackle income. We will address also the access to the new technologies in the measure that we increase uh, costs. And we will do in climate action because if we choose the adequate technologies, we will allow better use of inputs and avoiding waste, avoiding the use of fertilizers that will pollute the waters, the soil. So I will think in a strategy that is not only digitalization as such, uh, not without coordination of what you say. We see there are so many things that are not coordinated, but digitalization for something with a clear objective. And in our case, what we are seeing is this a package of actions that we could call agroecological transition, if you want, that will address several of these uh, factors in the crisis the price of fertilizers to improve productivity, include the small producers, and to make climate action. And that would be my message. Thank you very much. Excellent, as always. Thank you, Monica. Now we will go to Silvia and then Francine. Silvia, please. Uh, your microphone is muted. Uh, no, it's still muted. Can the technology people help us? Thank you, Luis. The main message is that we need to work with the small and medium producers. They have to help the small, the big producers, they have the capacity to invest. So we need to work with those solutions. But there are difficulties of cost, the connectivity, and the training. And here in Brazil, we are working in a training process to think in agriculture because we need solution. If we don't know how to use technology to improve the production process, so we need sustainability. We need a certification. We need those technologies. So the first step is to work in the training so the small and medium producers, the cooperatives, the producer associations uh, will have digital technology. The connectivity enables that training. And I think the most important is training to promote technology. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to you. We can keep working or talking in the next months. Francine, your final comment. Thank you. Uh, retaking what the panelists have said, I do agree that the fundamental is to diminish the digital gap in the rural world. I think that is the most important thing. And to be clear that it's fundamental to have policies that will improve the access, the use, and the training. If there are no policies or programs that are well-defined from the government, this will not be able to move forward. And according to our experience, the recent experience that we are beginning with this new government, we realize that two main focus in the technologies are 
as I mentioned, the youth groups and the women groups. The youth groups of rural people, because we have a post-pandemic effect where we see this return back to the rural area. The young people are going back to live in the countryside giving this technology to the uh, farmers. And on the other hand, the rural women, as I said today, these women are being left alone in the countryside. The population has an average age of 60 years and women are being left alone in the sense that men are looking other types of activities where they receive more income. So this is indispensable to work it at level of the rural women. And what I said, the studies show the facility or the capacity that women have to create networks to manage uh, uh, online uh, trade and to create links between the public and the private. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to you, Francine, Angela, Monica, Silvia. I think with the organizers, we can organize with each one of this. I think this is super important to place our attention. I would like to say that within the agenda, of the United Nations on family agriculture that has some pillars like young, uh, the pillar of young people and women. This can be an instrument that is not an exclusion factor, but as we have said, it can be an enabler, a catalyzer of new processes that will can contribute to the training of a more inclusive, sustainable way. So here we have to speak in the next moment. So now, in this platform, we have had 470 people and in the networks of FAO much more. So this is an interesting topic that convened all of us to keep deepening. And on behalf of uh, this uh, more rural, more digital, I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge, your guidance. To the ones that are looking and accompanying this space, we unfortunately, we don't have more time in this panel, but I will invite you to leave your comments in in this digital wall in the platform. So you can put your opinion about this meeting. Thank you very much, Francine, Angela, Monica, Silvia. We have finished this. And now we will go ahead to the other activities. Thank you very much. And for all of you, an excellent day in the next activities.